Hi everybody, I am doing a 30 minute session for a client. Gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. The goal is today, wanting to find a way to receive guidance from the spirit guides, struggling with life, struggling with work. I'm gonna go into these goals and read them word for word here in just a moment. I wanna thank you so much. This is to the client. It's really nice to meet you, really nice to be able to offer some support here some perspective on what you've got going on. And thank you so much for sharing with us here. I guarantee there are other people in your shoes that are gonna relate to you. And hopefully this is gonna help you and maybe even extend a helping hand to others. So thank you so very much. I'm gonna read your goals out loud and then we're gonna get started. You say, I want to learn how to connect with my guides. I'm ready to make a change. I've been ready for a lot of years and I'm not getting the direction I'm looking for. I'm unhappy with my job, with my purpose. I would like some perspective on this. Okay. Just a moment here. I'm just kind of, I'm just feeling out the language for a minute. So you're wanting to learn how to connect with your guides. You're ready to make a change. And this is something you've been feeling for the last series of years and you're not getting direction and something between how you're able to read guidance from the universe or wherever it comes from from right we get random guidance from advertisements and songs and family and you're just not receiving the clues <laughs> But really, you're, you're emphasizing connect with guides and getting guidance and direction. Specifically, you're unhappy with your job and therefore your purpose. So your job and your purpose and you want to find fulfillment is really what you're looking for is fulfillment. And then through a connection with your guides or a connection with a sense of direction, you will find that fulfillment. And so I'm just kind of feeling this out because it seems like there might be more beneath the surface and perhaps the root of this is finding fulfillment, right? Um, and so the idea is connecting with the guides and getting the directions going to provide that fulfillment, which I think we should go for it. <laughs> I think it can provide fulfillment, right? <laughs> but we'll just keep it open and see if there's something else we can't um, conceive of, right? Okay. Ah, oh, man, you've been ready for this for a lot of years and you're unfulfilled in your job. There's weight to that, you know, perhaps a sense of abandonment from the universal direction or your guides or receiving direction, or maybe you're blocking yourself from it. Okay. I think I'm ready. I don't think I know. <laughs> I'm ready for this. Are you ready for this? <laughs> okay. And I'm in the zone here. <sighs> All right. Okay, the goal here really offers some support to help you connect with your guides. I mean, that's the words you're using. How can we help you connect with your guides today? Really genuinely, truly connect with your guides today. You want to find... You're not happy with your job. I mean, that's specifically what you're saying. You're not happy with your job. Therefore, you're not happy with your purpose. Um, it feels like this word unfulfilled beneath the surface, trying to fulfill, create fulfillment, right? All right, so I just say, okay, let's go. Um, show me some stuff here. Let's get, get started and see what we can do to help you. And... I experience a lot of layers all at one time. One is a heart. That's beating, okay? That's one of the layers. Another layer is a very strange and small bathroom. And it's made, it's got a lot of tiles that are in square shapes and they're particularly the color green. There's uh, seems to be stalls without doors and the toilets are almost like not toilet shape. They're more like boxes <laughs> that you could sit on. 
And so the heart is beating, all right? The heart is beating and it's overlapping this toilet without doors. I will say it's hard to breathe. It's hard to breathe. And something stinks about it, okay? It's a bathroom, okay? It's usually toilets and bathroom and often represent something stinks. Um, something stinks, right? And then your heart is beating in something that stinks, okay? And without the doors, there's exposure. Like, there's no privacy here. But there's nobody in this bathroom in the scene either. And it's almost like there's an energy wanting me to just witness and observe, but don't go in there. <laughs> I, 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 it is, is what it is. It's one of the clues, okay? So right now I'm just sort of like in the zoo and I'm walking by and looking at there's the lion or there's the monkey. You no, know, this is the bathroom, okay? There's a heart and then there's this bathroom. But don't go in. But what I do and how I do it is to be the toilets and the, the tiles and the heartbeat. Um, so when there's a separation between me being these um, images, it's going to be hard for me to really translate the depth of what they're saying, okay? It's like watch, but don't become a part of it. Don't go too deep, all right? Okay, some other random clues come to me, like random ideas that... What if... Um, what if your setup, energetic setup, is to, to watch but not create connection? And maybe to watch is uh, less problematic or less sensitivity? Because if you participated and you became the tiles and the toils, you might not like it. It might be, might be hard for your heart to digest that information. There's something about the heartbeat here that's important to who you are. And if your heart is beating in a weird bathroom, what does that mean? It's not like it's beating in, I don't know, Hawaii or something, beautiful paradise. It's beating in a weird, small, like remote weird bathroom okay <laughs> and it's not necessarily dense like i don't see it. it's more like the ghost of your heart is beating here and it's like look at the animals don't touch the animals look at the toilet look at the bathroom don't touch anything don't become a part of anything it's just a random thought about why this picture you're wanting to connect with your guides you don't don't like your job and we're talking about for fulfillment okay so why this? <laughs> and so I'm going to see what the next thing is, okay? Oh, I put you in here. And you're, sorry, but you're, <laughs> you're going to the bathroom. And it is what it is. I'm watching you go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's supposed to be privacy, right? That's respectable. Like it's, it's a thing you just respect people's privacy. Just let them go to the bathroom. It's supposed to be exposed for a reason, okay? You say it is what it is. I'm like, okay, okay. It is what it is. There's no shame here for you. <laughs> okay. You just sit there and you take your time and you're kind of like, reading a newspaper or scrolling through the phone. You're just participating in an activity and you're just kind of taking your time. And I'm just watching you like an animal in the zoo going to the bathroom. It's just like, that's what's happening. And you say it is what it is. And the heart is still beating. It's always still beating, okay? You kind of feel like this is your life, like the mighty tiger taken from its homeland and placed into the confines of a space. And now it must find its joy in being watched at all times, watched at all times. Nobody, no, it's like th there's something way out of nature, out of harmony with this. But you shrug your shoulders and you just say, well, it is what it is. Because what's the tiger going to do? Is it going to escape the zoo and run back to its homeland? Like, 
In all reality, it must accept its fate. And you've decided that this is your fate and you must just accept it and it is what it is. What's strange is I'm starting to, to change and morph. And I'm a different, I represent a woman and I'm a different kind of woman. And I pace, and you're in a, a box, basically a, a cube-shaped bathroom. And I, there's an outer perimeter, okay? Like just a sidewalk that obviously is a square. And I'm walking around this. I'm walking around this bathroom. And I carry a lantern. And my eyes, it's kind of creepy, but my eyes are, I'm like a like big owl eyes and I my head like my body keeps moving but my head is always turned and looking at you <laughs> it's, it's a bit creepy okay <laughs> and I'm like determinedly walking and just staring at you it doesn't matter which way <laughs> I could spin my head around 360 degrees like in the exorcist <laughs> there's something very creepy about me okay so I don't I must either a this is my next persona in order to interpret or it's a spirit guide or something. So we're just going to go with it, okay? You are, you just don't care. You don't care. You just shrug your shoulders and say, what, what does it m mean to me or what does it matter to me? It's like the tiger caring about who's watching it. What does it matter who's watching? Well, okay, this is important because something has dried you out. It's like a pool with no water in it. Then how is it of service? It's just a pool with no water it's like, well, they I have skateboarders. My, I mean, if it's the right type of pool, I guess maybe it's for skateboarders or something. Like, I'm trying to think of a pool without water could be useful. But then it wouldn't be a pool. I mean, you kind of just say it, it, it isn't useful. A pool without water is not useful. You can mold and shape it however you want, but the truth is it is not useful. That's... That's what you say. And it's like, well, maybe I'm being optimistic. Maybe we need to just, maybe reality is a pessimistic world. And, and that's true. Like this isn't, um, it, sometimes it's like, just, just watch nature. If you watch nature, you will see the gross reality. Okay. And if you were in the shoes of that animal being eaten alive, right? It's like the gross reality. There's nothing optimistic about that. <laughs> so yes, life has its true pessimism, you know? Or if we take out the word pessimism and optimism, it just, it has its true raw reality. It's true raw reality. And, you know, we can mold and shape it however we want, but something in, in you has decided that the truth is the tiger in the zoo. The truth is, what does it matter who's watching me? They can't do anything for me as I can't do anything for myself. So what am I? I'm a pool without water. I'm useless, okay? I have no purpose. I was created to be a pool with water in it so that I could be have purpose. So that's, that's what your parameters are, okay? I want to know, I'm going to ask your inner self if truly connecting with your guides is the answer because it seems to me that the guides, based upon what I'm witnessing here, are not going to be able to help you and per perhaps nobody can help you because it, perhaps you've reached the ultimate depth of pessimism. Perhaps you are the animal, now the gazelle, in the mouth of the lion. And it's all over for you. You know what I mean? As it was intended to be. The ultimate pessimism. <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge this energy... We're going to light a candle in your candleless world. <laughs> We've got a lantern, right? With the owl lady. She's creepy. And she's cool. 
at the same time. I want to know her more. But you have to want to know her as well. And in order to want to know her, there is no such thing as pessimism and you've not reached the ultimate depths because there are none. There's nothing. The tiger then now discovers that there is something spiritual to be had that has no boundaries. There's no walls. There's nothing that holds it back. And you know, you have to let that into your heart. And are you going to be attached to the toilet room forever? You can never leave it. This is exhausting, like, like you're dragging a dead whale behind you for every step of your life. And it just is like this carcass that you've been assigned to carry. And it doesn't, this, it doesn't ever disappear and the weight is never reduced, like. All of this stuff is part of the, the answer, okay? Like, everything adds up, like I'm doing the calculation here, and I'm, it's all adding up that the gloom and doom energy, the pessimism, the defeat, the gazelle in the mouth of the lion now, and it's all over, and that's as far as it's ever going to be, ever was, ever will be, that energy is really um, paramount, like it really is alive here. What is alive here? is the pessimism. So I am going to challenge the pessimism, okay? And to what is alive, I don't wanna use the word pessimism or optimism. I don't wanna use any of those words. I just want it, you to be alive with life, right? Alive with life and it's bigger than the strange toilet room, okay? And it's more than this, it's more than the tiger moved into the zoo, like, Okay, so let's say in all reality you are a tiger in a zoo. And what else is there in life for you? What else? That is why some part of you knows you need a connection with your guides because you need nurture, you need nourishment. Because if the reality is, whether it's pessimistic or optimistic, it doesn't matter. The reality is the tiger in the zoo is life, okay? Let's just say that parallels life for you. It's never going to be real. It's never going to be truly natural. It's never going to be free. It's going to have some sense of freedom, but it's never truly going to be free. And it's like you're always going to be watched and never be able to just live it in your own style, in your own animalistic way or whatever. You're almost about to cry. It's a kind of a, feels like weakness, but it's not. Feels like weakness to break the pessimism stance. To open your heart I asked, I just say, can we please get you out of this bathroom already? It just feels like, can we put you somewhere nicer than this? Like, do, does all reality have to always exist here for you? Like, fruit smoothie stand. I, I put you, there's, I, I don't know, it's like a cabana that makes fruit smoothies. There's no alcohol, it's just fruit smoothies in a hot environment, but it has ice, okay? So the fruit smoothies are really, you're the maker and the receiver of the fruit smoothies. For some reason, this is better for you than the bathroom. <laughs> Maybe it's better for me because I just feel strange, you know what I mean? It's just, but you're so like, it is what it is. Then it's like, okay, then it is what it is. But there's more to life than that. There's more to life. And I've got to shift the energy into something that is more to life than that, you know? And you also have to be open to being in more to life than this. I don't, I feel like we're still skimming the surface. Okay.
I, I, I want to get I want to get more feedback and I want to make progress and I want to get some tips for you. I want to I want to speed things up. Maybe that's another thing. Maybe it's just life is slow and is it not changing and it's just always the same and it is what it is and well, whatever. This is where I exist now. The tiger in the zoo, blah, blah, blah. It just wants to hold on to the same thing and shrug the shoulders. Well, it is what it is. So it's like that energy's got to change. The calling of a giant whale body, the weight of it. Okay, I'm just going to get away from you. <laughs> it's like, there's a lot of this circulating. It's like the gloom and doom. And I know how life has a way of creating that domino effect, especially when it gets repetitive. And then when it gets repetitive in new ways, but the same energy, and we're just soaking in it for years and years and years. And it's just like, well, I guess this is my life because it never changes. And I'm like almost to the end. I'm a freaking completely dried up pool. I've just, I'm at the end, you know, <laughs> it's like that gazelle in the lion's mouth. It's over for me, you know, so a long enough span of time makes this the day-to-day -day life truth. How do I break that though? How do you break that? So that's why me getting away from your energy might be the solution to giving you something in your energy field that your energy isn't allowing to happen because the sounds are so consistent and persistent and the same you're gonna have to change your melody you know what i mean check check out my melody check check out check <laughs> i think that's how it goes right check 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 out my melody <laughs> gotta change your melody <laughs> You, you okay there's a lot of layers to you okay you i need you to say that i'm gonna change my melody change my tune i need you to say that what's weird is you silently say it in a tiny tiniest little tiny little like teaspoon sized <laughs> like volume and uh, you come out of a black sarcophagus. But what does that matter either? That's what the problem is. You're not getting in touch with what matters. You're just deciding that nothing matters anymore. Okay. I'm going to be the tile in the toilet room. And I'm going to be the sarcophagus. I'm going to be the woman with the strange owl head. And so are you. No, yeah, that's that's right. So I'm at you're gonna go first. I'm kicking you off the high dive <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna jump off the high dive and show you how it's done. I was like, wait a second No, you're gonna jump off the high dive and then you're gonna show me how it's done <laughs> And I'm like kick you off <laughs> I did it <laughs> Okay, I just feel like that's important All right uh, You want to vomit this is not a place for like going number one, number two. It's a place for puking. That's what this bathroom represents. Every one of these um, squares is a uh, is a really bad day. Such a bad day. <clears throat> it's vomit level bad. It's like you're like uh, being combed, like combed with these like i see a comb but i see that the bristles of that comb are like knives and it's just combing your whole body every one of these squares when you become them you just and the pain and suffering is almost numbing like because what else are you supposed to do? just vomit and scream so you just keep silent, shrug your shoulders, sit on the toilet and say whatever. Another day in the life of H-E double hockey stick. <laughs> AKA Earth. We were changing that, by the way. We're light workers. We're changing that. <laughs> we're, we're creating heaven on Earth here. 
That's right. Your purpose is to create heaven on earth. You know that, right? Your, pur your purpose is. My guides tell me you'll need to be poisoned uh, by every single one of these squares. Because the only way to get out of what you got yourself into is to feel present with the pain. You're creating a comfortable separation and then choosing numbness as a solution. And numbness as a solution will not be the path to resurrection. You must feel the pain. Because the pain's not really there. It's only a tool for your transformation. But to transform, you must feel the process of the transformation to acclimate to the reality of the transformation. Man, there's not, these uh, aren't just about this present day. These are about a lot of other lifetimes too. I don't even know how to conceive of them, but they're, ba they're really difficult. They're unfathomable. They're unfathomably painful. I don't know how to understand this one with electricity. I just keep seeing that you're terrified of something before you. But what's weird is the delay between what is it and what will it do to me and then it actually happening. And I don't know if it's real or a spirit realm world. Because it seems like you could consciously create your own demise and you would expect it. And uh, I see it's almost like a dream where you can't see what's in front of you, but you can feel it. And it's really freaking dark, okay, and scary and intimidating. And something in your mind concludes that it's going to strike you with lightning and uh, you're going to be burned like, a, I don't know, like you're in a microwave or something. And then, bam, it happens. And you're actually being electrocuted and fried. And it never stops. It just doesn't ever stop. And now being an empty pool sounds like a freaking day in paradise. This is a nightmare. I start to see, oh my gosh, I, oh man, too many pathways of nightmares. And you're constantly being tortured and tortured and tortured and tortured in nightmares. And you create, your consciousness is creating the worst case scenario instead of the best case scenario. But you need something to give you a best case scenario, like something outside yourself to give it to you. Like here, here, this is wrapped up with a bow for you because you matter. But nobody's doing it. You do it for yourself. And that is a very lonely road when you're the only one to give you a better life. Then nobody's going to be there to give it to you. You must give it to you. That is a very lonely road. And so what happens instead because of the suffering and the disappointment of that, you give yourself nightmares and then torture yourself in the nightmares. Almost like you don't need anybody to feel sorry for you. But in a way, it's like silently harming your guides <laughs> without with intention and not intending to at the same time. But your pain is really loud and really great. And you can't really stop yourself from hurting yourself in this way because you just want your guides to give you some solution that didn't have to come from you because it's too lonely. It's just too unbearably lonely. This has got to be reconciled. I told you it's like we're just skimming the surface. I feel like there could be in some very interesting dimensional spaces that you're connected with. And then day-to-day -day human life. It's like all this and then day-to-day -day human life. Like, how does this all like compute? You know, how's it all work? But yeah, this is going on. I tell you, you almighty master, what are you going to do since you're the one that has to give yourself the solution? What is the solution you're going to give yourself? Because you're tough. <laughs> I mean... Who is the creepy owl lady? I mean, she seems tough in and of herself. <laughs> but you seem tough. <laughs> okay, so what is the solution? Because there's something that you are the solution to yourself, and that is not a lonely thing. You're wrong. Because vibrationally it says, my God, that's so lonely. Like, I feel like this agonizing lone, lone ranger, like, walk. 
and misunderstood and not able to be helped, maybe even invisible, not like value. I don't know. It's just, you have to keep giving to you. 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 And it's just like, fine, whatever. I'm not, I'm not thriving because I can't just keep giving to me. I need to be given to as well. So there's something here in the teeter-totter of balance, but now what you give yourself is a nightmare. You're giving yourself nightmares. That is connected to you somehow. It's I, actually, you wear it like, I don't know, I see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I see that they've got this like basic gear on because they're turtles, but they got their like stuff because they're turtle shells, you know, turtle heads and stuff. It's you got this like little parts that have like some protection, but it's actually not protection. It's just like you carry these nightmares as your like turtle body outfit. It's weird, but you're also a ninja warrior, but you're also human. You're looking for compassion. Are you looking like, I would say with amidst what I've, because I have to add it all up, like amidst what I've come across thus far, you need sensitivity. You're tough enough, okay? You're tough. Tough enough to embrace your transformation. And you're tough enough to stop the path of hurting yourself and they say because something seems like it's done to you but you are the orchestrator and the only way to stop is to come into the nucleus of love inside and be who you know that you are it just takes so much strength to orchestrate between the energy world and then your body and the human prison system as i keep seeing a tiger that exists in the zoo and then i see apartment buildings and i see a community and we're all just wild animals living in the caged fences we're given our appropriate boundaries and we acclimate to this as our natural balance, unnatural to ourself. And it's not about developing some kind of discipline that's admirable. It's about the death of true life. And something in your spirit represents the death of true life. And it's so loud and deep that it's like, this is what you want, universe, for me, then this is what you get. But you're the orchestrator. What do you want for you? Because it's not this anymore. Let's go be the black sarcophagus for a moment. Um, it's a real jerk is the black sarcophagus is basically like a being that um, Kind of if a man could be a witch and we're not talking about a warlock. We're talking about a witch Because I know a male witch is a warlock, but this looks like a witch in masculine form a really tall really scraggly nose oversized chin, you know kind of like weird bite um it's like green skin warts, but a male version of this it looks like a man. He's skinny. And he eats ears for some reason. I see that he likes to eat literally ears. It's the weirdest thing. I see him eating ears. He has ears. He's eating them. And the black sarcophagus becomes this form and is eating ears. It's weird. Ugh, man, I, I become him, and I actually enjoy the taste of ears. I'll enjoy their texture the most. It's more for the texture, but it's also for the flavor. I like chewing on them for long periods of time. I don't know why it's satisfying. I feel like I could eat them like potato chips. I could just do this for eternity, just eat them. I want you to go be this strange ear-eating witch man. 
you instantly start gagging and barfing and you start screaming and you uh you become a tornado really and you quickly become a tornado and you're not going to tolerate it and you just start to tornado and suck everything up and then it all disappears you're like <gasps> you're out of breath and i say why did you do that Why'd you just like take the eraser and just get rid of that weird guy? Why don't you try to get to know him? Maybe somebody that you you need to heal instead of just, just smite him away or something. What if he's you somehow? That's an important clue. Get to know what you do not like. This is an energy world conversation. Get to know your nightmares. Get to know them. You would rather just get rid of them. You just rather toss them out the window. There's nothing else to learn from a, a gross, weird thing like that. There's nothing I can gain. There's nothing that is going to help me grow. I'm in the spirit of, of all that I am. Like There's nothing of the light about that. I don't want it. I can state what it is that I want, that I don't want. I mean, you, you've got a strong stance here that you, you are not, you don't want. Why would you? Why would you do that? It's like trying to have a decent conversation with a, someone who's completely drunk. It's like, because uh, vibrationally, it's like, it's pointless for me to have a conversation with that being because it's just simply pointless. I just will make that being going away because I don't want that being in my life. I don't want that being in my life. Bam. But they're telling me, don't be so hasty. You are the light, something like the light bringer. You are the heaven on earth. You are the heaven you are the heaven on earth. They show me when, as soon as the tiger realizes that his value is to bring joy to the hearts of children. The tiger will understand that how life molds and shapes itself is a miracle and a beautiful one at that. That it must let go of its sorrows of what it has lost in the idea of what it has lost but to embrace what it has gained in the sense of what it doesn't realize is so beautiful about the life that it lives now. And you need to visit these nightmares and you need to be the peace. You need to be the tranquility. You need to be the heaven. They're reversing time and they're forcing you to face this strange sarcophagus because that sarcophagus is a coffin it's an ancient coffin. It's a suffocator of one's own soul. It's a sick and twisted device. Vibrationally, it represents a device that traps souls. And you got out of the trap, and now you're facing the one that traps. And you smite the one that traps. But they're asking you to get to know the one that traps. Not that you have to be its friend, but that you become the heaven that it must face, you. Not that you just erase it from existence, but you mend its purpose, mend it, then mends your purpose. Okay, it comes back to feeling the, the squares you know, on the bat, the tiles on the bathroom wall, it makes you want to vomit. It feels like you're being scraped with a freaking knife infested uh, comb. <laughs> to stand before this being is making you rip in into a lot of pieces with rage, basically. Because this being is a mirror of a long time of t torture, not just for you, but many other souls. Seems to me that you're still reconciling interdimensional lifetimes that are very, very hard. And it's unreconciled and you carry the pessimism of death in the, like, the belly of yourself. And you can't release it in the toilet. You must go and be the pain, okay? And transmute it through the heaven of that which you are. 
they your guides are saying that as as you work with the heaven and embrace then facing what has been unreconciled as, as of yet because you have to face it from the light of all that you are in a way that's sentimental in a way that's like mother mary you know compassionate see it as one of your children it's a beloved child, this ear eater. You do, you get really still and you just look into his eyes. His eyes are have a light in them, but it's like a hollow, hollow eyes, like small black rounded bulbs with a very thin light at the very like depth of them and it's a long ways in and it's very hard to look into its eyes because that light is something about its eyes is vulnerable almost like you get lost in that dim dark hollow path he starts to challenge you and he starts to show that he's eating your brain and um, just don't react to him. Don't torture him or put him on a wall or cut it. Like, it just feels like you want to fight him for that. Don't. He's eating his own brain is all he's doing. You know what to do. You do, you, you just say you're just eating your own brain. And his eyes start to uh, burst like dams and there's like this black liquid and he's not crying. It's almost like he's a keeper of a, of a soul prison. And the key to opening and setting these souls free is to face him properly. And to bind him with his own own decisions bind him to his own decisions not you just get rid of him there has to be an eye to eye of some kind an eye to eye okay seems to me that the message about life purpose and fulfillment and the human world and the job the conflict is who are you as a soul who are you as a, a spiritual person what truly is your connection with your guides? What is your role here? There's some reconciliation still interdimensionally that would be so far out. <laughs> it would be a really interesting Hollywood movie, but it wouldn't really fit into the confines of the human day-to-day -day humdrum life. We'll go to Walmart and get groceries versus I'm facing the ear eater, the prison keeper of lost souls of an interdimensional plane. And I'm telling him he's eating my own brain as he's challenging me. And he's weeping these freaking juicy tears that aren't really tears, but it's like the, I don't know, some kind of remnants of soul juice. And it's freaking weird. Now that is going to bring light to your soul. <laughs> Because you're, you're being the heaven and the reconciler. That is the transformation step that is going to be the key that unlocks the door for you. Because you will be then who you are. And if I were to fill in any more blanks, you could say that who you are doesn't doesn't have a word in the dictionary. Maybe the word spiritual. Um, maybe the words, um, I don't know, like cosmic healer or something. Um, traveler of the universe. I mean, how does that compute with uh, accounting and taxes? <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's like, how does that fit into the humdrum, weird human world that is actually so exponentially interesting and in all its interdimensional layers with the souls of who and what we are, you know? <laughs> so I'm going to let you work through that 
and you can work through that. You can totally work through that. You're gonna have to ask yourself who the owl woman is. She's pretty tough. She's a tough bird. <laughs> Something energetically tough about her. And remember, your guides are timeless. They don't think less of you. And they don't demand of you. They're just present with you. And then through this session, then they reach you. But you can be reached, no problem. You become the tiles on the bathroom. You become the ear eater. You become yourself and you face that ear eater then faces its reflection in the mirror properly. Then you release the trapped souls. Then you release yourself from your own bondage. Then you will know. Uh, sis, basically what I'm supposed to tell you. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I've got. Thank you so much for exploring the session with me. And I feel like I could talk just straight with you about what comes forward. You can handle it. I mean, you on the toilet, like it is what it is. Like, what? <laughs> I'm surprised by that because most people would not would there would be an energy of shame an energy of, of desperate for privacy an energy of some kind that would be in resistance of that reality you were just like i'm a tiger in a zoo that's my world you watch me go you watch me go <laughs> like perplexing okay okay that's somewhere to start <laughs> it's very specific okay so this is the path, this is the recipe for you. Thank you so much again. Really glad I could help you out today. And thank you everybody for watching. If any of you are interested to have me look into your situation, I'd be honored to share perspective on it. You can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.